Hello, in this video I'm going to be picking this Martindale Electric Safety Lockout Tagout Lock. This was sent to me from Nigby all the way in the UK, so it has traveled a, a very long distance. One of the things that's cool about this Lotto Lock is that you can disassemble it. It's meant to be taken apart. It is a six pin lock. The serial number is on the bottom as well as matching serial number on the key. It is key retaining. If you look on the inside there, maybe you can see the Phillips head to disassemble the lock. And it uses ball bearings. Um, both the core and the shackle are dead and there's no springs attached to them. I'm going to be using a 40 thousandths ergo turner from Covert Instruments for top of the keyway tension and a 23 thousandths deep flat hook from Jimmy Long's as my pick. And this is not a blind pick. I have picked this before. <laughs> knocked it out but but we got it there right before it uh <laughs> before it fell out so that's kind of lucky there all right okay so i got that apart i'm gonna go ahead and uh start cutting it and taking it apart um i will say for me um very easy to overset the pins on this i am probably going to watch a video on the secrets of not oversetting pens because I think I could use some more more information and practice on that. So I'm just taking out the Phillips head there. Not quite all the way out yet. There we go. Now that that's dropped out. Um, if we just pull this straight out Leave. We can do that. There we go. Pull this straight out. You can see how these pieces sit inside there like that. Um, we've got the ball bearing. Actually, we can let go of these parts right here. And if we wanted, we can just um, we could just put this in the vise, and we wouldn't have to worry about reassembling this. But I will assume that that didn't work out for you, and these all fell out. So we've got a little cam here and some ball bearings. On this side, we can see the lock there. Um, there's a little nut to for the uh, the screw to hold it in. Um, this is actually very similar to if you there's online STL files to make cases for the Master 410 Lotto. So you can break your Master 410 Lotto, or maybe you bricked it, turned it into what, like a rattle. Um, you can get, you can download and print your own 3D housing for it. And the structure of that 3D housing that I've seen online for the 410s is set up just like this one. So 
So if you look on the bottom here, this is a thanks to Nick B's video. Um, there's a couple couple things you'll notice here. So these big gaps here. I'm not sure if you can see that. Let's see, you can see that we don't have a solid plug here. So this is one of those very evil um, skeletonized cores. So we'll need to be careful of that while we're while we're picking it or while we're disassembling it. I'm going to go ahead and use the key at this point because I'm going to go through about this in a very methodical way so I don't don't damage this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start placing some shim material in there at the top. Oh, I need to show you this too. So you're saying it's a six pin lock, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven holes there. The seventh hole is for a retaining pin. Um, so we need to be able to lift that retaining pin up, get it out of the way. Um, and actually, I'll show you from this end. If we insert the key and rotate it, we can only rotate it so far because that retaining pin will block it. our shim and it's not going to go in all the way so we just have to get it started as best we can which is a pain I think I could trim the shim a little and it might be more helpful I like to put a little bit of an angle on it that started a little bit can take this hook come in the back stand by let's try this slightly different let's bring the vice over <laughs> there we go. Pretty sure that did it that time. So what I'm doing is there is I'm pushing on the shim and I'm using the hook to lift up, lift up that um, retaining pin. Now that we've got that in there, I should be able to insert the key and then continue pushing this forward. Yep. So we do want to be careful for sure. We've got that skeletonized core that will. I can tell you from experience that if you like twist this and pull a little bit with a skeletonized core, it is just going to tear the springs up real good. So it's a very disappointing moment. So I'm using this 0 0.398 uh, inch follower right here. I'm pushing it through. And we have this. Taken apart without any damage. Nice. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, the pins in here. Let's take a look at this guy. Let's 
six. No, you don't. Oh, that's such a small pen. That's a very, very lucky that didn't just go in the carpet. That would have been horrible. That would have been a bad day. That's a little guy. I would take a very long time to find. That'd be a vacuum cleaner one. Oh, I'm sorry. Y'all don't even see that, I don't think. I got that too high. Um, yeah, I almost lost that little pen there. It almost ran away on me. All right, so... Now let's take a look at some of these drivers. Okay, that's our first driver. Our second driver. I guess I'll keep these in order. Spring. Last but not least. be the retaining pin. I'm just taking a look here at myself at this. Okay. Yeah, it looks like a pretty standard brass Bible there. Um, and all these pens, they look pretty standard to me. They've got, let's see if we can take a closer look at some of these real quick. All of our driver pens appear to be about the same. The same height here. Um, our retaining pen here. Should have paid closer attention to which side was up or down. Um, let's see if we can tell from the way it sits in here. Yeah, it looks like it. So the narrower or the smaller diameter side fits in there. And I believe the larger side will not. Yeah. So I want to make sure that we put the larger diameter into the Bible with the narrow diameter going into the the plug here this is a super skeletonized plug they cut away everything they didn't need yeah it's interesting all right well we got here let's see if we can get it back together
think I'm going to start. I'm going to do it so that I do four, five, six. No, I'll do five, six retaining. Then I'll do four, three, two, one. One little guy. There we go. Super lightweight little plug here. Try to be extra careful with two. It's a pen I do not want to lose. We don't want to lose any of the pens. Check there. That looks good. Okay. I'm going to grab another shim because this one looks a little bent and I just I don't want to fight with it right now. So. Interesting. That, uh, that retaining pin in the back is being a pain. So it's good to find that out now. But we still got the, uh, we're still messing with the shim material. Don't want to figure that out later. I'm going to try to come back part way. And hopefully I can. Maybe I should be trying to do this from the other side. But let's see if I can do it from this one. Shim all the way through. Okay. Let's 
Ooh. Almost lost my pins there. Alright, we got all our pins in. Push this over that. And we can start going back. Okay. Get that forward all the way. And make sure we're lined up. Okay. And there we go. Got a little quick function to check. All right, we're good to go there. Drop that back in there. Now this next part is a little tricky too. We're going to put the uh, the ball bearings back in here. You got to be careful how you hold it because they like to they don't like to just stay. Where you can drop that can back in easily. I'm putting the bolt in, I'm lifting up just a little bit there. You can see that, so I can. And then I'm going to try to get these two these ball bearings to sit just like that, and then kind of like playing operation. I'm going to try to drop this cam down in without dropping them into the middle right there. This very well may take um, a few tries. Trying to get it on the camera for y'all, but I may not be able to. I may have to do this where I can hold it slightly easier for me to see. That might be good. Yep, there we go. So you can see when it's in there right, I can just hold it up like this and nothing nothing falls out. Alright. And now, I'm just going to use my vise to hold this just like that for a second with me, for me. While that's holding that, I'm going to come over here to this. Insert my key. Rotate it like so, and now you can see that that sort of looks like the mirror there, and I should be able to push this right down, like so. If it's still open, I can put that screw back in here from the top. Oh wow, 24 minutes. I had no idea this had gotten that long. Alrighty. It's in there nice and tight now, I believe. Alright. Now we have gutted and reassembled this lotto lock without any misery. No broken springs, no missing pins, um, no rattles, no broken plastic. That was a, a successful pick, gut, and reassemble there. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, but definitely something uh, <laughs> a lot to be careful with, even still, um, taking it apart and um, reassembling it. There's definitely room for mistakes there. Um, yeah, but this is a neat little lock for sure. And uh, thank you, Nigby. Thank you for sending me this. This is cool. Um, and thank you all for watching. Um, yeah. Uh, have a good day. Bye.